something deep within. And when you hold me close, I never want this to end. You're something special, and love is divine.
Hey guys, I'm so sorry. The interview had an issue. Uh, sorry, the audio had an issue. So the interview had an issue. Uh, we're just gonna do it one more time um, from the beginning. I'm just gonna figure out the inter the audio source. One sec. Uh, the audio might, the audio might be fixed. OBS won't tell me. So, um, yeah, okay. can you see the mirror you're in the screen? yeah, you can, but it's like, Sorry. but then, then you should also be able to hear me. <laughs> Sorry. You should also be able to hear you.
It's so strange because I want to keep no, talking, I'm, but I'm like, oh. <laughs> but I'm like, you can be part of the interview and like, uh. yeah. yeah. And it's funny because like, folks are seeing us like <laughs> on video, but not hearing yeah. a thing it's that so we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, you can be part of the interview and like. Uh. Oh, yeah. we have sound. And it's funny because, like, folks are seeing us. Oh, we're back? <laughs> On video, but not hearing a thing. I'm like, I'm going to be part of the interview. And, like, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. we have sound. Hey, Gabby, can you mute uh, your audio? Because I think I'm hearing you. Wait, are you listening to it right now? Oh, that was me. <laughs> oh, it is you. It's not Gabby. Okay, and here we are. We are back. After um, some very interesting technical difficulties. So I just wanted to um, ask you more about the video. Can you tell me about how you put it together? Because it is um, visually stunning, but also like very simple mm -hmm. and like classic timeless, these things. Thank you. Oh, what great adjectives. We like that. Um, yeah, so I was kind of racking my brain on like how to do something that looks good and like um, that was, was interesting because this is the first time I'm actually like performing um, a set with this project um, with Shan Shan um, doing like electronic, ish ambient soundscapey stuff yes. in a <laughs> performance capacity so I was like not really sure how that was gonna go and I'm like I want it to be visually interesting but also kind of like a place to experiment and explore and um uh I luckily was able to get my uh creative partner to come in and like shoot the video um she did like brought in some of the visuals, visuals, some of the stuff. And then um, my partner came in and like did some of the, the cajon um, on some of the tracks where there was like live looping. So it was just really like, who can I bring in <laughs> to come and help me figure out this thing? And like, uh, yeah, it was very collaborative. It was like really uh, fun to just kind of like work with the people who are around me and yeah. Uh, did I answer that? That I sounds amazing. You, you, yeah, you, you totally did, 100%. That, that's so amazing because I feel like, I don't know, there's this like saying that I have in my head that just popped up. It's like simplicity does not um, make room or allow for mediocrity. And so I think like in terms of the, the variety of performances that I've, I, I've seen, this one really sticks out. So tell your team they did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. I will pass on the, uh, you know, these very nice words. Yeah, and uh, I also have a little witchy question mm -hmm. for you. Are you a Libra? No. I was getting no. like strong Libra really? vibes. It's so beautiful. Really? That's cool. I'm like <laughs> very far from Libra. Um, I'm a Scorpio. Scorpio, that was my second yeah. guess, actually. Yeah. Okay, interesting, interesting. Can you speak a bit um, about, I noticed that, or I guess how I interpreted this video is like, what am I trying to say? It's like there were, I, I definitely saw themes that you were bringing in in terms of the visuals like that um, spoke to the, the natural world. So maybe if you could speak to um, how the natural world influences your practice. Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think like, especially with this project where I'm working a lot with like samples or like, um, MIDI sounds, things that are very like electronic and like on the computer and like um, synthetic in a sense. I'm drawn to this idea of like the, the parallel, like the the contrast, contrast kind of between like natural things and like natural things also being distorted through okay. Um, 
like synthetic electronic stuff. I, I, like those two two opposite things for me are I find very interesting, um, and I like to to bring that into my music and my creation. And it's always something that's in the back of my mind of like, you know, especially like today we experience nature through like so many different windows. Um, and yeah, I just find the, the disconnect that we have is so interesting. And I'm always curious to, to play with that idea. Nice. Now, I know that um, in your in your bio that I read about, it said that you, your previous work is a little bit more singer songwriter. So, can you touch on the process of like putting together this EP and how you brought it to life and why you wanted to make this switch? Because I know that you also like basically put together this entire album yourself, which is like amazing. Just like watching YouTube videos, like who does that? Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I I I feel like I'm a very I, I don't know. Maybe other people create in this way, but like, um, I'm just always looking for something that's challenging. But I'm also like, like I wanted to get into production for a while, and I I tried to do it, and I just couldn't like wrap my head around it, and like I never felt very confident about the things that I was doing. But then like when you know shit like closed down and everything and like with the pandemic and stuff I had like the time and the space to to kind of focus on that and I kind of just woke up one day and I was like screw it I'm gonna do it and <laughs> I've been kind of in that way so like instead of like instead of you know like making bread you were like okay I'm actually going to do the thing that I want to do exactly exactly and I was making bread and I was making you know pastries and desserts and not well but I was trying to um but yeah in the back of my head I'm like okay what am I going to do with this time and I'm like I just really want to learn how to produce and I watch a lot of YouTube videos that like hurt my brain <laughs> but the thing that really like made me develop my own sound and voice and like um try things was just doing it um Right. And I just, I love just doing things and trying things. And like, I am very self-conscious about uh, making mistakes and like presenting things to the world. But at the same time, I'm like, what else am I going to do? Like, I, <laughs> I'm yeah. this life, like I have to just, even though I'm like crying on the inside all the time <laughs> and screaming <laughs> into the void, I'm just like, well, I got to do it. <laughs> It's amazing. I know nothing about uh, crying on the inside and screaming into the void, <laughs> especially yeah, not yeah. in this year. Um, so do you think that your your uh, your work is going to continue sort of in this direction or where, where do you sense? I know like talking about the future is like a very difficult thing for us to be doing at this time because who knows, but if you can give us just kind of a sense of like if you're going to continue making this beautiful like electronic ambient poppy music if you're going to continue doing that well um i do so the, the music that i shared tonight is for, from an upcoming album um okay. so that stuff hasn't been released yet so uh there's there's electronic music that will be out in the world eventually um but in terms of like continuing on I really enjoy producing right now, so probably. Also, like, I don't know. I only just have to hold myself accountable to, like, you know, the things that I'm doing. You know what I mean? Like, if I want to see one day, I, I want to go into, I don't know, I, I can't think of a random style of music. Um, or just not music. Like, I, lately I've been really into, like, interpretive dancing stuff. And I'm like, why wow. do I do that? I, I want to be good at it, but that's okay. I just want to like be able to allow artistic practice to just move and try things and like make mistakes and hopefully people enjoy it. And if they don't enjoy it, even if, even if they don't, even if they don't, I think it's like, as, I don't know, for me personally, like the older I get, the more I find it like really important to put myself 
in situations where I'm challenging myself because if you don't get over your fear and if you don't sort of like push yourself past your limits and like mess up and like fall flat on your face, it's like there's no way that you're going to go from that. So I think it's like really beautiful that interpretive dance is now part of like your little tool belt that you're putting together, your COVID relief tool belt. Definitely, definitely like a very... um nice place to retreat to that's just kind of for myself and um yeah right now producing feels like this thing that's just for myself but then there is the other side of like I would like people to listen to this thing and I would like people to like it and I'm like ah weird territory (laughs) I I'm here I'm people I like it so (laughs) I'm sure there are uh more people that will love all of the work yeah. that you put out into the world. Um, right now, I'm going to see if we have any questions from the chat, because I'm not sure if you know, but we also have a group chat going mm. on the live stream. Let's see. Looks like there's nothing right now. <laughs> um, what else can I ask you? What are you listening to these days? Ooh, um, what am I listening to? Honestly, like, uh, I've been listening to a lot of like bossa nova. Uh, I've okay. been listening to some dub. I've just been listening. Like, I don't know. I've just been listening to a lot of different things, um, but not hardcore listening. Um, okay. And I think that's been kind of new. Um, in the sense of just like. Some music on in the background as I'm like cooking or cleaning or like you know working out in the garden or you know I I think there's there's a space for like really intentional listening and like listening to a specific album like start to finish but right I don't know right now I've just been in, in, enjoying like the easy listening <laughs> just kind of like <laughs> like having music be this thing that's just like um, ambiance. Right. I think also during this time, it's like really, that's kind of also where I'm at. It's like, I can't, I can't really listen to anything that's like very challenging, you know? <laughs> I'm just like, you know, just help me get yeah, through my exactly, day, please. Exactly. And so you're in Toronto right now, and I just want to know what is like, what's happening musically in the city right now? Is anything happening? Are concerts opening back, are venues opening back up? Um, Honestly, I'm like the worst person to ask. Oh, because <laughs> I'm like, I feel like I'm su- in such a bubble of one. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, like it seems like people are trying to do some festivals or whatever. I'm like, I, I don't know. They're not calling me. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just, I'm just out here making my little music and. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I hope, I hope for the folks that like are itching for those opportunities and, you know, wanting to share their music in that way. Like I'm hoping that those things can open up and, and, you know, the aspect of communing and connection, like that's, that's hard to have music. So yeah, I'm, I, I just want to see some other folks perform and just kind of like have you have you been tuning into a bunch of live streams (laughs) okay okay i won't tell anyone except the entire internet uh just now (laughs) i'm being too honest oh no (laughs) no 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 you're fine you're fine i also i'm i feel like um having like computer fatigue at this at this time definitely makes yeah. sense. So I won't, I won't hold Thank it. You. Against you, you know? <laughs> Let's see. I'm not sure what other lovely things we can talk about. Is there anything you wanted us to know? Um, my first single called Maladaptive Daydreams is coming out July 9th. Amazing. Yeah, you, it, you could pre-save it if you want. I don't know. <laughs> Tell us about it. Um, it was the third song that I played in the in the set today. Um, and yeah, what what do I say? It's like it's kind of 
childlike and fun, but also there's something kind of unnerving and unsettling about it, which is you know, a place I really like, that kind of uncanny space. But it's like, it's like fun. You can kind of like move your shoulders to it. <laughs> nice. yeah. Am I selling it? I don't know. I you you sold you you sold it to, to me. I am people again. Uh, so yes. <laughs> um. What else do I want to know? Have you have you been to Montreal? Yeah. Have you experienced Tony Pro Popolo? Not in IRL? real life. I haven't. I hope to. Um. I really like okay. Montreal. Um. Yeah, I don't. Know. What is it you like about Montreal? Um, I don't know. There's an energy about Montreal, and I just feel like um, artistically, like there's something interestingly different about Montreal versus Toronto. Not that Toronto's bad or yeah. anything or whatever. <laughs> we quote me saying that I hate Toronto, um, but yeah, uh, I've always been curious about Montreal, and I, you know, thought about maybe one day at one point in my life, I'll check it out and you, spend some time there. You should yeah. come check it out, yeah. come check it out. Yeah. We welcome you. Uh, speaking yeah. on behalf Thank of you. All Montreal, feel- you are welcome. <laughs> well, I think that brings us to the end of this uh, lovely and very nerve wracking first you interview did great. for myself. I had a fun time. It had- yeah. Oh. Oh, thank you so much. You did great. I didn't do much. Um, but once again, thank you so much for that beautiful performance. And um, where can people find your music online? Um, uh, you can find my music on Bandcamp, H-N space S-H-N, pronounced Shan Shan. Um, okay. And uh, all your favorite music platforms, it's there. Um, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. You're everywhere on the internet, yeah. just like yeah. us. <laughs> you know, if, you, if you're feeling, if you're feeling the vibe, you can, you can connect with me there. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Anika. It has been my Thank pleasure. Thank you. I had a great time. This was awesome. <laughs> Excellent. Have a great night. You too.
Thank you. 
And hi, uh, you are tuned into Swanee Peri Popolo uh, TV um, and the festival this year, 2021. Uh, thank you so much uh, to everybody who has been um, joining uh, these events online. It's been really great to see a participation, not just from Montreal, our city, of course, from around the world. Um, and thank you, of course, to Stephanie Castonguay and Tim Cowdy uh, for their performance earlier tonight and Les Deserts Move. Um, and, and of course, uh, Gold Pissar, uh, who is Ruse Bay, uh, who is joining us. Um, and uh, your set was uh, really beautiful, Ruse Bay. Um, thank you so much also for taking the time to, to speak. Um, I felt a lot of bravery in, in what you were doing um, in, 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 in that mixing of sonic experimentation and spoken word. Uh, and there has been some questions from the audience, um, but first I'll just say hi. <laughs> hi, hello, hi. Thank, yeah, thank, thanks for having me, Swony and Stefan and everyone involved. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a labor of love shooting this thing. Um, so yeah, so thank you to everyone. Respect, respect, and all the angles. Um, one of the questions that, that came up, um, well, somebody had commented, how does this look like a movie? Um, but the question <laughs> but the question that kept coming up, which I'll just present to you, uh, Rusbe, is where was it? I don't know if it could also be an undisclosed location, perhaps, but. No, no, it's, um, it's uh, a church called Saint-Jean de Vianney, and it's in Rosemont. Um, okay. and it's some friends of mine that run an artist collective called Collection Libéré, um, who had done a show there two years ago and they were on good terms with the folks there. So they very generously put me in touch. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And, and I mean, it sounded beautiful. Uh, yeah. love the claiming of that space also, um, I was reading uh, earlier this evening, um, thank you for sharing that, um, about the release that you had on Opel Tapes, um, The Flesh of the World. Yeah. Um, and it wrote um, on furling like a recollection of sonic memories, um, poetically weaving sounds of traditional and contemporary Iran with synthesized sonic imaginaries in a queer act of becoming. Uh, I realize that that is a specific release, um, mm. but I mm. thought perhaps some of the uh, text describing that release you had on Opal tapes spoke in some ways to what you're presenting tonight. I realize it was a, a new creation, also. Yeah, yeah. I think the um, I think the unfurling still unfurls very much, but um, <laughs> but perhaps less sounds of sounds of traditional Iranian music and Iranian pop music. Um, I'm trying to incorporate more of my own voice um, into, into, into what's, what's to come. Um, a lot of these, a lot of this music is, has taken a very personal and intimate term. Um, and, uh, and so it was important for me to kind of figure out what my voice was and not so much Gugusha's voice, but we all love Gugusha's voice. Well, we we love Gugusha's voice. Yes, we, of we adore Gugusha's voice, but <laughs> but we also wanted to hear Ruzbe's voice. So that was kind of what this this new music is about. Yeah. Well, the act of becoming, and and I mean, I guess finding a voice is a lifetime process. Mm. But how was it? How was it for you to sort of? take that step i i did think of bravery uh, like right away when i when i saw you doing the vocals in in the church there um mm. how has that process been for you um it's been a it's been a scary and healing process um a lot of although i recognize that you know when when we hear music like this the lyrics don't always register they might somehow um on a more subconscious level but um a lot of these poems are are very personal poems about illness and fa um a failing body and so um 
to speak them out loud in space amongst people is um, is always nerve wracking, but feels also quite empowering at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess I guess it can be both those things at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. respect, respect. Um, I wanted to make sure um, just. Uh, before we go deep into that, I just want to make sure to make um, uh, uh, re represent some of the audience questions. Mm, um, sure. And and I think uh, people, as mentioned, were um, interested in your presence in that particular space that we what we just saw earlier, where, uh, as we were just discussing, uh, we saw that articulation of voice. Um, but I think this question that came up from Steve Bates, who was watching the performance. Um, he asked, uh, wondering what effect that remarkable space might have on this specific uh, performance. And uh, I just wanted to make sure to present that question. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, that space, I don't know, it inspired something very sobering, I think. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be um, a kind of very serious but like a, a sober serious mm. i wanted to have a sober mm. serious tone and and mm. i think a lot of them most of the stuff i played um there's kind of these it, it never gets too busy mm -hmm. the, the pace is quite slow also because mm. um because there was a kind of beautiful natural decay and so you mm. couldn't really get into like any fast tempo any anything too busy just kind of got muddy so it was important to just let stuff breathe um, mm. um yeah yeah let stuff breathe i think that's that's kind of what the the intention was behind that mm. Mm -hmm. and 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 throughout the piece also there was it seemed like almost um there was just many chapters yeah. and and each sort of section yeah. seemed to let the other section breathe also yeah yeah i i it's it's always um i'm i'm a bit obsessive when it comes to <laughs> comes to narrative because there needs to be some sort of overarching mm -hmm. feel of mm -hmm. of narrative and and so mm -hmm. i'm glad that it felt like chapters of the same tale because it's very much what it was mm -hmm. um it seems you know we were talking just before we went live um and i loved i just want to underline i love that this was in a church um and and in the quebec context i thought that was just awesome um for yeah uh many reasons and and i thought that you know um I also, we were just talking about this sort of wave of um, musicians in the Iranian diaspora that have been um, taking space in electronic music. Uh, tonight it was literally in a church. Um, and But then there's many different representations. Opel Tapes has released a number, um, Sivash Amini. Uh, and I mentioned uh, Amir Abi, uh, Secret Pyramid in Vancouver. I realized there's also a really important underground um, experimental music festival that uh, electronic music festival specifically in Tehran that's yeah. been developing. I'm how's it yeah. to be part of the wave and what does it mean to you? I mean, I don't, yeah, I, it's, I mean, it's, it's great. I don't, am I part of the wave? I don't know. It's, it's I hope so. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great. <laughs> um, I mean, this this Opal release was great because it it did kind mm -hmm. of put me in touch with a lot of these people who um mm -hmm. who I've been listening to and just admiring um for a while. So it it almost feels weird to be considered part of the gang, but um but you know it's 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 always um you know being a second generation you know, being part of the diaspora, being queer and Iranian and diasporic, all these things are are muddy, muddy grounds. And it's stuff that mm -hmm. that, you know, we 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 learn what that means. Um, and uh, it's a process. But the church thing is it, it is funny, you know, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I refrained from using some of my Shia 
chest beating chants um because i thought you know the co- the the contrast might be a bit a bit much but uh but yeah that was the church and um and i mean the, the running gag was um don't tell them that i'm a muslim faggot um but you know <laughs> right on <laughs> Um, yeah, and I, I actually, I was looking up, um, the, while I was watching this, I was thinking of the, uh, the hidden imam and sort of like, just sort of like the sort of spaces of like mystery and sort of the mysticism and, and, and also just how it relates to traditional, I mean, traditional is a weird term to use, but I mean, you know, like, like the, no, but like the, the, the reality of like improvisation and, you know, Mm. sort of that, that space of dialogue that exists, you know, whether we're talking about uh, Santur or Kamanche or, Mm. you know, um, instrumentation that, you know, didn't exactly align to sort of like frameworks of like specific composed music that, you know, that might be often associated with the idea of traditional music yeah. um, in, in a Western context. Totally. But yeah, it's obviously part of Iranian musical heritage. Yeah, I mean, I love, I, I love that connection you made between mysticism and improv because it's, it's not something that ever crossed my mind, but it, it really is, is something that I will think of from now on because I think there's, there's something there. Um, yeah, I don't know, you know, improv is interesting. I don't think, you know, as like electronic musicians, we think of what we do as improv ever. Mm. Um, and I wonder why that is. I, I, I wonder why that, you know, no, but you, you know what I mean? Like, it, what do you think? <laughs> I, what do you think? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I, I really don't know because mm. I mean, improv is so rooted in in jazz and that lineage, right? And it's like how mm-hmm. it almost feels weird to talk about improv outside of that lineage, you know, because mm. it's, it's so rich. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. but you know, we got our instruments. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. And 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 in this piece, there's there's the voice. Um, yeah. Maybe just visiting that again, um, because I, I would imagine there are some sort of fixed refrains uh, I heard in that piece um, that there was the um, an exercise in empathy, and and you were repeating sort of an afra- refrain. Uh, I believe that's what it, uh, what you said, but an exercise, and then you repeated different things, um, and yeah. So uh, yeah, if 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 uh, any thoughts about like the vocals and and improvisation Mm. or is it a specific text no i mean i almost everything that was voice it, it it it's different things it's either a specific poem that's being recited Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in in that part actually that is improvised there's um material behind it but the delivery is completely improvised and it's basically a mm-hmm. a bank of words that i memorized that sound like empathy mm-hmm. so there's mm-hmm. there's there's wow. ecstasy used to see enmity mm-hmm. emboli entropy and the list goes on and the list goes on mm-hmm. but um but um it was interesting to me to kind of unfurl unfurl these words until you get to the right one which is which is empathy but wow yeah okay so that that's what that is but but that is a very kind of train of like just like a a a flight of thought type Mm. of thing where i don't really i just know i know these words and and i know that the last Mm. one will be empathy but um wow yeah okay yeah wow well, I, I want to make sure to get to the audience questions. There's one from yeah, yeah, sure. Lou Trespa, uh, who says, uh, I'm yeah, curious hey, Lou, what Lou. the creative process for <laughs> for a piece like that 
it, it, excuse me. I'm curious. I'm curious what the creative process for a piece like this, uh, like this, is like. Yeah, it's big question. Damn good question. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> question. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I I knew I wanted to start off with guitar, and I knew I wanted to end with that organ, mm. and and then and yeah. And that then then there was the between. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thanks thanks for 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 sharing your thoughts on that on that. Um, and uh, it's great to see people sharing their questions. We do have a few more minutes, so if in case anybody would like to ask a question, you can leave it on the Swony um, Facebook or on the website, and we'll get to it. Um, so. Um, yeah. Well, th I mean, this is just there's so much we could go into. Um, Maybe I'll just just visit back this. Um, we we talked about uh, the voice and also improvisation, and um, and and sort of like the different chapters. Um, and I thought of sort of like um, also like um, the sort of circular nature of some of the sections, where yeah. like it's sort of like I I felt like a, a sorry it, it would okay. So this chapter is sort of rounding yeah. out and. And and I thought also of sort of the breath that you feel in, mm. in you know um, in in the piece. Yeah, no, I mean that's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> I I don't know what I would add to that. That's that's really beautiful. No, um, I just uh, well, I guess I I guess I was trying to oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I mean it. it I do. Um, you know, it's, it's circular. <laughs> um, for the for the longest time, mm -hmm. and I think this is still the case, but my bio in SoundCloud has mm -hmm. been important. Yes, has yes, very important. But yes. it's been circular narratives. Shout out SoundCloud. Yes, <laughs> circular narratives like rooms in a house. Um, mm. But um, mm. so uh, and like rooms in a house is a quote from Jenny Val. Um, when she was describing her music making, and uh, and yeah, all that to say that yeah, circularity has been on my mind since day one, since I made that SoundCloud account. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and and I mean, um, well, I mean, just just the the sort of also the the nature of some of those sounds like i i think it was organ you mentioned that you were sampling in the the last the last section there was some sort of uh organ la layered it was being layered uh, yeah i mean there? actually th that was entirely synthesized um okay that was entirely synthesized but um but i really wanted it to be an organ without it being an organ um so, mm. that's, okay. so that's what um that's what that was. But if we're, um, I think I would just, I think I would ask you a question, Stefan. Sure. <laughs> if, if it's fine. Welcome. Um, I mean, not so much a question, but I wanted to um, just talk about your initiative of Musicians for Palestine. Um, <laughs> and just, well, first of all, thank you for that work. And, creating a space for us people in the music community to be able to make our position known on the conflict in Palestine and also ask you if it's possible for people who would want to sign up or join or where how they could contact you to get that information. Sure, of course. Well, thank you for mentioning that. And actually, I thought of the letter we wrote, uh, which I, I co-wrote with Yassine El Salman, Narsi, mm. and Nicholas Jar. And I thought of um, what you were saying in your performance when you're revolving around the word empathy, because I was actually, I thought of that when I was watching your performance, mm. Rusbe, because um, one of the words that we started that letter was with was empathy, mm -hmm. and we actually discussed that a lot. And um, and yeah, and we we tried to also make a connection with artists in Tehran um, 
to build, mm -hmm. you know, links uh, around uh, that initiative. Um, but I think, you know, what I felt from your piece um, was around, uh, like, revolving around that word. And, and, and that's really was sort of one of the ideas uh, was to think about what does empathy mean and, and, mm -hmm. and, and how to act upon that in mm -hmm. a way that is community oriented, um, which I think is obviously a big part of what Swaney is trying mm -hmm. to work on. Um, and and um, it's really, really great to, to speak with you, uh, Ruzbe, also just because, you know, my brother and I talk a lot about, because uh, we both do sort of experimental, uh, uh, you know, electronic music, yeah. and um, our, our family is like Balkan, like Bulgarian, Macedonian, and okay. we, we, uh, um, we have some Iranian family through marriage, okay. um, and... Um, we are all, we're so excited about like the I Iranian representation in the electronic music scene, and you know, seeing artists like Siavash Amani um, mm. being released. Your work on Opal tapes, and and I think also just back to your performance, and 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 it it was just really exciting to see um, to think about um, also the fact that it was in a church here in Quebec, um, but just thinking about. Um, that sort of the complexity of voice, you know, and representation yeah. just in terms of like um, um, the, the, the layers of diaspora and, and yeah. like what, what, what that means and, 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 and also how, how important is that to your work? I mean, it can be like an individual's experience, but then there's also sort of connective tissues. Yeah. Um, within a diaspora, within the magnitude of so many individuals. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's. I mean, w one of the main things, kind of that coming, one of the the main anchors of of mm -hmm. making this work um, mm -hmm. was was realizing how. Um, this notion of a monolithic self is so fraught of how fragile we are as bodies, yes. as individuals, and and you know, I realized that mm -hmm. when you know when when I hurt and when I am sick, my mm -hmm. family is sick and my mm -hmm. culture is sick and my country is sick and these layers of of health and sickness resonate with each other and and i think you know there's my grandmother's voice in that performance mm. somewhere mm. where she mm. lets out a sigh she says eh khoda chibegam like dear god what what do i have to say um, and I think that sums it up pretty well. Do you ever get the chance to visit Tehran, or is that impossible? Or last time I was in Tehran was ten years ago, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and who knows when the next time will be? Mm -hmm. But I very much, mm -hmm. I mean, I very much would love to. Have you gone? Mm -hmm. No, but um, I've, we'll, of course, we'll, we'll go uh, together. It'd then be amazing to visit. <laughs> um, this was so great to speak with you. I mean, there's there's like so many directions to go, um, and there there are a few um, questions here. I just want to make sure to to to, sure. to get to to get to them uh, and and um, so one uh, one audience member Deanna says Ruzbe you just mentioned Jenny uh, Havel mm -hmm. uh, are there other writers or poets who inform your own writing process how might you your voice figure into the writing process um, and there's there's another question that I'd say going back to the, the 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 text that you presented tonight thank you so much yeah thanks for the that's a great question um, yeah, Jenny Val is is definitely a big influence. Um, another influence is um, May May Bersenbrugge. I, I I never know how to say her last name, but um, I think it's Bersenbrugge. 
that's how it's spelled. Um, mm. She she's an American Chinese poet um, who's been writing poetry for a long time now, and it's yeah. this beautiful mix of 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 like mundane observation and phenomenology and like okay. quantum physics. It's absolutely <laughs> no, it wow. truly is. It's like the galaxy inside a poem, and mm. and actually the the very last excerpt that I recited in the performance is a poem of hers mm -hmm. called Scalar. Oh. And it's in her oh, okay. last, it's on her most recent book called The Treatise on Stars. Um, but it, it, I mean, that book is amazing. All her work is amazing. So I maybe, maybe mention her name again. Yeah. If you yeah. mention her name again. Yeah. Maybe. May May Burson Bruji. So M-E-I dash M-E-I. And Burston Bruji, well, I'm not going to spell that, but you know. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, yeah, sure. There's another question. Uh, it says, um, um, Poubelle says, interested in um, thoughts on confidence and owning a space. How do you prepare yourself mentally to fill and own a space? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know if I do, honestly. Um, I, I'm always relieved when it happens. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, mm. It's it's a it's a surprise to me, as much as it is to to anybody mm. else watching. I'm not sure how mm. that happens. Mm -hmm. Maybe that goes back to this. Like, I, I mean, I I felt watching your piece this. Bravery was the first sense, mm. uh, but there is also vulnerability and work, mm. um, and putting that out there is 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 a lot. Um, Thank you. Well, it's been a long night on yeah. Sony TV, and it's been great to talk with you, uh, Rosbe. Yeah, um, if people are interested in hearing more of your work. Um, thank you so much. Uh, is there some maybe places they could go uh, to, to check out more? I guess we can share all the links, but just in case you wanted to share anything yeah. or are any upcoming projects you have. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, you can check out The Flesh of the World on Opal Tapes Bandcamp. And I do have a release coming up in the fall. It's called A Body Without and in Need, um, and it's on a local label, and I'm really excited about it. So um, nice. hopefully you'll all be hearing more about that soon. Um, yeah. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's been really great to, to speak with you, and uh, thanks for taking the time. Um, and, and also, uh, 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 well, there's a question, which local label, but I understood you don't want to talk about that right now from my, your tone, but in case, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm just, just sharing the, what the questions were, um, but uh, um, uh, so, yeah, thank you so much for, uh, t for being here and for, for taking the time and to share your thoughts um, and for the beautiful set tonight. Um, and thank you to all the audience, too. Thank you, Rosby. Thank you so much, Stefan. Um, okay, great. Bye. Yeah, you too. Um, and I'll just say, say uh, just quickly, thanks to the Swanee staff and to all the other artists uh, tonight. It was um, a, 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 a long but beautiful evening with, with many sets. Um, um, Cold. Gold Pizar, uh, of course, Ruse Bay's project. Um, please check out The Flesh of the World through Opal Tapes. There's also the set by Stephanie Castonguet and Tim Gaudi, uh, also Les Desert Move, uh, and Swanee continues tomorrow. So do, do tune in. I'm Stefan Christoph, and it's a pleasure to, to be with you and Ruse Bay tonight, and uh, see you later. <laughs>